Good day, my wonderful and amiable listeners. I bring to you another news. The news headline. Only God can forgive Osibadu for these seven cardinal sins. The news in full. He is slick, the boar, smart, articulate, cerebral, a natural choice for the next president of Nigeria, if not that his door with Mr. Mamadou Buhari has totally ruined the economy and indeed the society. But aside that, he has committed seven cardinal sins that only God can forgive him for. I cannot for I am not God. Any right-thinking Nigerian equally should not. Pastor Professor and Vice President Oluyemi Oluleke Osibajo, being one of the lucky few among us human who hears directly from God himself, should therefore seek forgiveness and show contrition. I will list and briefly analyze those sins below. 1. Push for further devaluation of the Naira. Most Nigerians are bitterly complaining today about the high cost of everything in the face of their stagnant salaries for those lucky enough to have some type of job or the other, or declining sales for those in business because of the reality of inflation. Inflation on most sample items in, Ni in Nigeria has been up between 300% and 500% since 2015. Salary has hardly been up since then, but some of our importer entrepreneurs have been able to increase their prices. Those who do hard work have not been as lucky. The inflation we face is motivated. Some come from intervention as a result of COVID-19. Government has been spending money to help a lot of people. Thus, demand push inflation has happened. But most of the inflation is far from supply side. Seller of goods had to incorporate the higher cost of producing their goods or importing them for the final consumer to bear plus the premium. Since most of what we use in Nigeria imported from the clothes on our back to the materials from our houses we live in, in even on the food of, on our plate, most Nigerians have badly been ate. Only a few has been able to escape it. That is why poverty is higher and more are out of work. 33% of those who should be working. Secondly, combative push to integrate Nigeria economy with cryptocurrency. Vice President Sosibadu made a shocking statement in February 2021 around the subject of cryptocurrency. As usual, as he got plodded from the annoying, uncaring crowd of fast money chasers who have little or no belief in their country or in the dignity of labor. I hope he doesn't actually believe in those ailing. The Central Bank of Nigeria, as like all other central banks, is instructed local banks to entertain cryptocurrency transactions in a view of their tendencies to aid the maxim of corruption, criminal and generally black money. And the, and the fact that, well, that category of fiscal assets is expected to cause the next global financial crisis. Through the pandemic, Nigeria was reported to be the second highest trading country in the world in terms of cryptocurrency. In news that was shocking itself, given our very low per capita income, the CBN has gone on to create its own inera, which could be further developed and integrated to achieve flexibility, but Osibajo at that time stated that rather than adopt a policy that prohibits cryptocurrency operation in Nigerian banking sector, we must act with knowledge and not fear and develop a robust regulatory regime that is thoughtful and knowledge-based. Thirdly, is neglect of Nigerian youth and failure to rescue them from the allure of fast money. I personally cannot forgive Osibadu for neglecting our youth to their devices, despite being a pastor, instead of trying to slow them down in this new mad quest to make money by all means and fast by preaching dignity of labor, he appeared to have preferred adding petrol to their quest. He has been on a pursuit on unicorns, many of which with the flutter wave story are turning out to be mere cowboys or as David recently reported, called them corporate Yahoo boys. Fourthly, continuous pursuit of a wasted ease of doing business index. I don't know if Vice President Osibadu like his boss, but he does not bother about getting feedback about his policies from the public. For a few of us had written about this, the World Bank developed something called the ease of doing business report in a previous article I questioned who that index was meant to help. Because of at least five of the, te the ten factors that it measured were totally irrelevant for a local businessman, especially the youth. Five, unaccounted for tra trader money projects. Regarding this one, I would like to cut Vice President some slack. I believe he is merely doing the job he was sent to do. 
I'm hoping his office did not come up with the concept because even though I am a bit left of the center in economic leaning, I understand that our people need to be sometimes rescued or incentivized. I have always preached that we should try not to give something for nothing. I would have preferred a social transfer program that encouraged our people to say pick up trash in the community for money or that they should plant trees. But the trader money and market money schemes I understand were unaccounted for and we have not heard of any repayment and I understand that the government did not get anyone's data that it ended up mere gimmicks to win the last election. As a senior lawyer, pastor and professor, the vice president should never have been associated with such a scheme that, that we have people asking questions. Never he will have to ans answer for this in the future. Many reports are out there alleging different levels of fraud in the scheme. Other allege that ten tens of billions of naira have been lost therefrom. Six failure to think about balancing his team along religious lines. Faluk Perugi, the infant terrible professor of Nigeria origin, based in the United States of America, man managed to nail the vice president on this. I initially ignored the allegation as one of Faluk's sometimes emotionally outburst. But I then read the article and the allegations were stark. The vice president office released a pathetic video where all the Muslim staff associated with him, past and present, spoke. I thought that was an overkill. If there was no grievous error, Farouk, in my view, should have been ignored. In fact, it was the, it was the video that made me read Farouk. I found out that the vice president left it too late. He apparently never thought of the balance of staff in his team. He probably forgot that it is a public office that people talk a lot and we ask him to account someday. I found it out to process is lining up with all pastor powers from appointment. In fact, it is not about our judification, it is his parification really. I have personal friends, some of whom are pastors in the redeemed children of God, who believe that Osipajo was rather partial to only his family and personal friends. 7. No solidarity with the Kaduna kidnapped. The last Kaduna scene, which Osibajo has asked to go down on his knees and beg God for, is a life issue. As we speak, there are 167 Nigeria, all of them innocent, with kidnappers. They have made abuse by video, and just yesterday, a lady whose relative is among them gave a very angry statement in which she alleged that they have been left on their own to deal with the kidnappers. The incidence of the train bombing, in my view, is worse than what happened in Chibok, on the back of which the body government rode in in 2015. All the while, as operating Gulag Jonathan, in the Kaduna bombing and kidnapping, the boys who stormed the train kills eight people, point blank, indiscriminately in cold blood. They killed Christians and Muslims alike, men and women. They took children into captivity. As at that time of writing, they have been about 20 days in captivity. The longer they stay there, the less their chances of returning because those doped out boys will start using them for target practice. And in all this, I have not heard a word from President Barry apart from the usual touch manufactured by his spokesman.